quarter to seven, I've got to go. Very well, there we go. <laughs> Where are we today? Today we are at the uh, <laughs> crash site of the end of the League of Gentlemen Series 3. We've been here three days and uh, there's a lot of filming here because all six story endings converge at this point. So we've been here day after day repeating the action six times with six different characters' endings. It's very complicated. It's like 24, but no of them. You better hurry for me. <laughs> Some of that was good. A tit fell out. It was nice. Tits off and fall out when you're on mine, do. I've got smaller ones, chicken livers, and, like chicken fillets. They fall out and they roll along the floor. Pauline's a bigger one. Did yours ever fell out? Yeah. You've never ran as a woman, have you? I've never run as a woman. No. But there's always a first time, yeah. Irises are made of rice. Cause they're rice bags. Dugs, they're, they're dugs. You have to <laughs> pat them down. They often fall out. Yeah. What? Yeah. And when they're due to be awake... Today, we came up with the idea of um, using the plastic bag which blows out of the charity shop window in the uh, Papa Lazarus story. And what we were after was... If we were trying to get across that these six stories were happening in the same time period, we wanted one thing which you would remember that could occur in each of the stories and that would really help show what we were trying to achieve. The idea we came up with was that there is an accident caused by Pauline and she's saved by Lance. We see that it was Jeff who was driving the car. Charlie is brought together with a potential partner through the accident. The result of the accident is that Alvin's crime, well, not crime, but Alvin's, uh, well, it is a crime to bury 20 bodies in your back garden, but Alvin's crime is not discovered. And the final twist is that the person who we thought was um, Charlie's friend turns out to be Keith. And during the last episode, we find out that Keith is, in fact, Papa Lazarou. So what, what scene are we doing today, dear? That's what I captured right there. Oh, captured again. Oh, he's the victim. Sexist. She, she plays victims, don't she? You always play victims. Always the victim, yeah. Who? I can never get much work, you know, other than the look that, you know, huh? they what say I've the... got too strong a look. What about the PG tips that didn't come off? Didn't come off, oh. they went back to can't do it. Oh. Shocking. With location filming completed, the carnival up sticks for two weeks on a soundstage in Leeds to shoot the interiors, as we call them in the business. While the last shots were filmed, the programs were cut and the cast recorded any additional grunts and groans certain scenes called for. All that was left was for the Divine Comedy's Joby Talbot to write and record the music. With that, the third series was complete. That's it. Thank you. Lisa has completed his bar. Steve Pemberton has completed his bar. Steve, thank you very much, sir. Steve, fuck it out. So that's it, we've done it. We've washed our hands of it. Can you please? Kind of. There's bits of it that are good, bits of it that you just think, that's not what we really imagined, but it's we're too far down the line to change it. And that's nobody's fault. It is, but I can't go into that. <laughs> thing, if you've gone so far, you've filmed it, you've written it, you want... Why not try to get it right, as you imagined it, if it's possible to do so? 
But then you get into there's lots of people's opinions on what is right. So how can you settle on one? You're never going to be able to do it. Was the day of transmission had finally arrived, and it was time for Steve to unleash the awesome power of his devastatingly direct sales patter. Hello, League of Gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Hello, thanks. Uh, are you both all right this morning? Yes, very good. I always think uh, our show starts tonight, first plug, but I always find it's... it's <laughs> I was going to mention it. <laughs> I know you were, but I always find it a bit anticlimactic the day of the first broadcast. Because you, you, you had but the final and most terrifying part of the process still lay ahead. The reading of the reviews. So do you guys really care about your reviews then? Oh, what do you think? Passionately. Have you got a preference? <laughs> no, no, you go first. Now the Daily Mail is curious because uh, we don't want against to be all odds they've actually been really good to us in the past, don't they? Knowing that I am never going to sit through the League of Gentlemen again is fantastic. <laughs> ah, the characters are relentlessly grotesque, the plot lines such as they are are incomprehensible, the script is feeble and the whole thing seems completely pointless. Above all, it is deeply unfunny. Perhaps I need to be taught surrealism. Oh, I fucking hate that word! Is Dali in it? <laughs> okay, here's The Guardian, it's local heroes. That seems And good. it's Gareth McLean. So far in the League of Gentlemen, with his third series shows, Jeremy Dyson, Mark Gates, Steve Pemberton, Reese, Sears Smith, bolder, funnier and more daring than ever. Oh. Fuck you, Daily Mail. The Times. Right. Last year's <laughs> surprise <laughs> word of mouth comedy hit, The Office, begins its second series on Monday, trailing clouds of glory and glorying in clouds of trailers. Yeah, don't we know it? Yes. Quite right too. The Office is great, but the concept has never been particularly original. Back in Paris, then, the third series of The League of Gentlemen, BBC Two, has arrived with very little fuss. Oh, ah, yeah. yeah. fucking fuss. This is a pity, because for my money, it is by far the most original comedy since I don't know what. Oh. That's part of the trouble. There's nothing quite like it, and I'm not sure that there ever has been. Oh. Royston Gracie has plenty more to offer. Oh, that's excellent. Oh, well, that's good. I forgot the guy who's done them. That's, that's it. it. Is that Brilliant. it? Is that all we got? <laughs> well, it's very good. Has it been worth it? Is it too early to say? Of course it's worth it. We've got 50 grand. That's <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the money. I'm joking. <laughs> the money. What a massive anticlimax. Yeah. Depressed. <laughs> Why are you depressed? It's all gone now. So there we go. That's what it feels like. To do, write a series, have it on, have it reviewed, and then you just... The empty shell. 